as we're decluttering, we run into all kinds of things. We run into things from our past self. Like this is, this is the Rachel in high school, and this is what she was interested in, and the things that she collected, and the clothes that she wore. And we run into our future self. Like this is who I'm going to be when I retire. And these are the items that I'm going to use because I will have so much free time. But today, I want to talk to you about the fantasy self. The person that you never were in the past and you're never actually going to be in the future but you have this fantasy of this is the type of person I am and actually so many categories fit into this today I just want to walk you through the process that I had to go through as I was sorting my stuff on this journey to minimalism, I had to come face to face with this fantasy self, who she was, and determine which one is the fantasy Rachel and which one is the real life Rachel. Because in all honesty, all of the fantasy Rachels were getting in the way of the real life one, the one that wanted to be present with her family. So I just have this list of things that I had to deal with, and I'm just going to go through them one by one. Cookbooks. I still love cookbooks. I really enjoy sitting down and thumbing through and getting ideas. So many cookbooks. You know, there's the, the make ahead cookbooks, the freezer meals, crock pot meals, the grill cookbooks, the marinades, the baking, the cake decorating ideas, cookies, Cajun food, the ethnic foods. So, so many cookbooks. But the truth is, if I wanted a recipe, I'd go to Pinterest because, well, I wanted to see reviews. I wanted to see what people thought. Like I, I'd search all recipes for something and I'd be able to see everything that everybody said about the recipe. And I wanted to know, is this a five star chocolate chip cookie or is this just a three star chocolate chip cookie? So my fantasy self that used the cookbooks was someone who would pull out the cookbooks every week, lay them on the table and go through each one, create a menu plan, write out a shopping list and have beautiful meals every day of the week. But the real life Rachel is subscribed to emails and also has the rotating favorites of the family like tacos and spaghetti. So I was able to let go of all of those cookbooks and free up tons of space in my kitchen. These days I have one cookbook, it's a three ring binder type and this is where I've collected recipes and I've saved my own. And this is all I have now. It's kept together with duct tape, but this is it, this is all I need. And I know it because I had all those cookbooks for years and years and I never referenced them. Fabric, I had so much fabric. When I was in my early 20s, I did a lot of quilting. I loved it. And then as I got older, I wanted to get into repurposing. I loved the idea of sewing my children's clothes from old things. And I did to some extent. I would go to garage sales, I would pick up fabrics, and I made a few things. I made my daughter a dress, I made my boys some clothes. But honestly, the collecting was more fun than the actual doing the work. And it got to the point where I had a massive collection of fabrics and I never wanted to sew. The fantasy self sews all my children's clothes, but the real life me, I got six kids and I don't wanna spend all my time sewing clothes, especially when I can go to the thrift store and pick up jeans that the boys are gonna rip holes in. No need for them to have a matching suit with a bow tie, because that's not how we lived our life. I had rough and tumble boys, the vision I had of how I would have them dress in all these clothes that I made them, there's no way it would line up with the reality of what we really live with. Over the last 12 years, the only things I have sewn have been costumes for our local Renaissance Festival, which we have a booth at. So we need costumes. And I was able to let go of all of those fabrics that I had collected and I just kept the tools. So now if I do decide to sew something, I can go to the store, I can buy the fabric for that project, I can do that project, and then I can put all the tools away again. I don't have to manage all the stuff. This is the same with yarn. I had this vision of myself sitting on the couch and crocheting things all winter long. But the truth is, I don't want to do it. 
When I sit down on the couch to watch a movie, I don't want to crochet. And after so many winters went by where I did not pull the crocheting out of the basement, I had to come to terms with that was a fantasy. I am not going to do that. I'm not going to be that person. And it's okay. I also had old quilt tops that I'd collected. I appreciate the work that they put in. And I couldn't believe that someone was getting rid of these hand-sewn quilt tops at a garage sale. But you know what? I had quilt tops in my basement that I hadn't finished. So adopting other people's projects, that was definitely the fantasy self. Notebooks. I love notebooks. I see a notebook, it can be a journal, a dotted journal, a blank notebook, a sketchbook. I love them all. But you know, when you have 20 notebooks just sitting on the shelf and they've been, they've been sitting there for the last 10 years and you haven't used them, in fact, you, you probably even added to the collection, but you don't actually journal, then maybe that's something that you think you want to do, but you don't actually want to do. Since I got rid of all of my notebooks, I have actually started journaling. It shifted from being that, that idea of like, oh, I, I should collect these because one day I'm going to, to actually deciding I need to be intentional about this. So I'm going to buy one notebook and I'm going to use it for this specific purpose. Stationery. I had a collection of beautiful stationery. I grew up before internet, but I never even used the stationery back then when I was a teenager. I would write letters to my friends and I would use a piece of notebook paper. All that special stationery, I was saving it, you know, for that special reason. But there never was something special enough to justify using the stationery. So I had this huge collection of just beautiful stationery. And then by the time I was 19, everybody was getting into email and then there was no reason to use it at all. I had visions of me as a genteel lady with my flowy dress and my sun hat, writing a letter to my beloved. But that's not my reality. I am never going to put on a sundress and a hat and go sit out in a meadow to write a letter. I'm just, I'm not gonna do it. Baking dishes. I love to bake, so this was a hard one because I do bake cakes, I do bake pies, I do bake breads, and I really enjoy that. But I had so many tools that I actually never used them. They were just there, you know, in, in case I wanted to, to make a cheesecake, in case I wanted to make a trifle, in case I wanted to anything. So I was able to sort through and pick out just the ones that I actually used. I do use the nine inch cake pans. I do use a couple pie pans, but not 10. All the specialty items I was able to let go of because the real life cooks real food, not three-tiered cakes. Could I? Sure. <laughs> Will I? No. Clothing. I love the idea of dressing like a professional, but the truth is <laughs> I don't like to iron and I'm not going to take things to the dry cleaners. I detested doing laundry for years. So through this process, I've had to make that easy on myself, which means no specialty items. If it's going to get ruined because it goes through the washer and dryer, it's not going to make it in our house. Gardening supplies and homesteading. I love the idea of homesteading. I romanticize it in my mind. We could have chickens and grow our own food and have a cow with fresh milk. I could make cheese and canned fruits and vegetables. But the truth is, I do not want to get up every single day and go milk the cow. And I don't want to clean out the chicken coop or have to break the ice out of the water in the winter. The real me can handle a few garden beds. That's what I can manage. The fantasy me wants a five acre homestead. And then garage sales, because, well, we should save this. This is good stuff, we should have a garage sale. The truth is, I absolutely hate selling I hate setting it up. I hate advertising. I like, there's no part of the garage sale process that I like. I would like to end with just a note on unfinished projects because I know people are gonna ask. And yes, I got rid of unfinished projects. There were unfinished projects that had been sitting for at least 15 years that I needed to do. And every time I saw them, I would be disappointed in myself. Yep, I still need to do that. And I, I would should myself. I should. I should make time for that. 
there are people who don't have the funds that would really appreciate getting that. Put it out on Facebook, offer it for free. Let those go and let the heavy burdens go with them. You know, when someone has high expectations of you, it's a heavy burden. Think about someone in high school or college, like, okay, my parents expect me to be a doctor and I don't want to be a doctor, but they know I'm capable of that and that's what they envisioned for me. And it's a heavy burden. We do this to ourselves with all of this stuff around us. Everything around us is reminding us of unmet expectations, even if it's something we expected of ourselves. That means that every time we look around the house or we go in the garage or in the spare room, we're reminded that, yep, we're always disappointing ourselves because we never live up to our own expectations. But when we can acknowledge that and let those items go and get them out of our house, all the heaviness, all the weight, the emotional weight of those items leave as well. If you would like to join me in decluttering, I send out weekly PDFs to my clutter-free army. The PDFs include six 10-minute missions, an area to focus on, questions to ask to help you work through each area, and make the best decisions for you and your home. So you can move forward on your decluttering journey just 10 minutes at a time. I'll put the link in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.